What up, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Kiba and Son, the podcast. We're about to start the show in a little while, but before we start the show, I want to give a special shout out to this beautiful cognac right here, Kamu. Thank you very much for sponsoring the Ed Lover Birthday Extravaganza, not only in Atlanta, but in New York City, too. And a very special shout out to Aria Wright for putting it all together along with my man, Dan Tanner, and everybody else that worked on the Ed Lover special birthday party. You know what I'm saying? Because it was a stone cold groove, baby. And if you missed it, that means you wasn't invited. Okay, that's all you need to know. Killer and son. And a special shout out goes to Angel Ray. And a special shout out goes to Paula at Main Event. Y'all check this cognac out. It is very, very, very tasty. Kamu. Yes, you can. Now, let's get into it. Killer Ed Son, everybody black that's checking out this Killer Ed Son episode, don't take your ass to Mexico. Stay the fuck out of Mexico. I don't give a damn how much Don Julio they got. I don't give a damn how much Casamigos they got. I don't give a damn how much Patron they got. I just don't give a damn about them sombreros. I don't give a damn about the pools. I don't give a damn about Cancun. I don't give a damn about Tulum. Stay the fuck out of Mexico. Come on, son. Did y'all hear about those four people that were kidnapped in Mexico? Come on, son. They were black. Come on, son. Black people never get kidnapped. But in Mexico, and then two of them were dead, two of them the police found and sent back home. Come on, son. Are you still thinking about going to fucking Mexico? Are you really thinking about going to Mexico? Are you thinking about going to Tulum or Cancun or Puerto Vallarta or Cabo San Lucas? You still thinking about that shit? Come on, son. Fuck out of here with that bullshit. Okay? I am not going back to fucking Mexico for a long ass time. They got too many of them goddamn cartels out there, man. Did you see when they tried to get El Chapo, son, what the fuck happened out there? Come on, son. And he's a fucking criminal. Well, allegedly. I ain't going nowhere near fucking Mexico, okay? And if I advise you, don't go either. If you in Texas, come on, son. Don't fucking go to Mexico. If you in San Francisco, come on, son. Don't fucking go to Mexico. And allegedly, one of the ladies that was found alive, she was going there to get one of them, you know what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so like, I know what you're saying. You know, BBLs. Kill her, son. Stay the fuck out of Mexico. First of all, I ain't getting on no motherfucking flight. You know why? Because motherfuckers is crazy on these planes nowadays. Did you hear about this dumb motherfucker that was on a flight, United Airlines flight, coming from L.A. to Boston and tried to open up the emergency exit? Put up your hands and say, don't kill me then, or don't approach me because I'm bald this hard. As renamed by God, Walter, since I'm taking over this plane. Oh my God. Dude, I'm uh -oh. telling you right now. Hello. I'm telling you right now. Okay, yeah, you can't get by that door. Ooh, you did it, grab him. Oh my God. Come on, son. Francisco Severo Torres, or whatever your name is, you're a fucking dickhead, son. Come on, son. Didn't you try to stab the flight attendant with a broken spoon? What the fuck are you doing? Come on, son. Your ass is going to jail. And they're going to put you in a cell right next to the black lady that was on the airport that tried to go into the cockpit because she ain't get her fucking drink. Come on, son. Do you see them tiny ass cups they put your drink in anyway? Come on, son. Why the fuck are you going to hold up a fucking flight just because you didn't get nothing to drink? Come on, son. Go in the airline bathroom and drink out the fucking toilet if you that fucking thirsty. You stupid bitch. Fuck out of here. I ain't getting on no flight no time soon. Come on, son. Fuck out of here. And speaking of, come on, son. All you motherfuckers that had something to say about Chris Rock's stand-up special. Fuck you. You got to be out of your fucking mind. Come on, son. Selective outrage is fucking funny. And it's just jokes. I don't give a fuck that he said something about Meghan Markle. The shit was fucking funny. Come on, son. Like she ain't know the fucking royal family was racist. Y'all gotta be out of your goddamn mind. Anybody that can Google can see that shit. 
Come on, son. And so what? He went the fuck off on Jada Pinkett Smith and Will Smith. They deserved it. The nigga slapped the shit out of him. Oh, wow. Did y'all forget about how Chris Rock must have felt? And how his family must have felt? You want to hit my motherfucking brother? Because your bitch gave you a side eye? And how his mother must have felt? Come on, son. All oh, y'all talking about he's punching down on women. Well, fucking Will Smith punched him in his face. Come on, son. Y'all motherfuckers run around here and act like Will Smith and Jada Pinkett Smith are beyond reproach. Come on, son. Fuck out of here with that shit. It's true. She was fucking her son's friend. If I would have been fucking my daughter's friend, y'all have threw my ass underneath the fucking bus. Come on, son. And then she mad at Chris Rock because he wouldn't quit the Oscars. She called for that fucking boycott because Will didn't get nominated for concussion. She wanted everybody to boycott. Remember, Oscar's so white. But soon as he gets nominated for best fucking actor for the uh, Serena Williams and Venus Williams picture, when he played their father, all of a sudden it's okay for us to go back to the Oscars? Come on, son. Get the fuck out of here with that bullshit. Y'all couldn't see through that shit? And the shit that Chris Rock said about her was a fucking joke. Y'all need to learn how to take a joke. Now motherfuckers is jumping on stage trying to stab Dave Chappelle. Motherfuckers jumped on that stage one time on DC Young Fly, and he knocked the motherfucker out. And now y'all want to complain about everything a goddamn comedian says? Fuck you! Come on, son. I'm a fucking stand-up comedian, and I'm going to say what the fuck I feel like saying. And if you don't like it, don't come to the fucking show, period. Come on, son. Now let's start the show. Come on, son. son, son, What up, y'all? Welcome to Come On, Son, the podcast. I'm your boy, boy, Ed Lover. I grew up in Queens, New York. Now, where I grew up at was Murdoch and 209th Street. All the way down Murdoch, past 197th Street, was Farmers Boulevard. There were a couple of people down the Forest Boulevard, all the way down Farmers, going into the south side and everything, that were legendary people, okay? Everybody from my hood knew who Bimmy was. Everybody from my hood knew who Joe was. And everybody from my hood knew who Miss Deb was. Miss Deb is responsible for Gucci. Miss Deb is responsible for Nicki Minaj. Miss Deb is responsible for probably some of the favorite artists that you know today. She's from Farmer Boulevard. She's from Queens, New York. She's Waka Flocka's mama. Ladies and gentlemen, and everybody in this room, let's give it up for a living legend. Miss Deb is in the building, y'all. Come on. Come on better than that, motherfuckers. My sister. What's up? What's, what's up, up, sis? What's up? We're going to talk about whatever the fuck you want to talk about. What are we talking about? I don't know. Where do we start with you? I don't know. You're an idol maker. You're a legend maker. You're a star maker. You're a mover and a shaker in a business that has been dominated by men for so many years. We know your story. We've seen your story. We know that you used to sell dope on a major scale. How did you move from that to where you are right now? Oh How did that God. happen? No, because we can't. My we past can't, ain't 100%. We just come right in. My past ain't 100%. I've been in those been, streets. I never done stuff like that. <laughs> Is the Statue of Limitations up? All right, forget I said that. Tell me what's going on. How did Miss Deb become that motherfucker in hip hop? I don't know shit. A hustle is a hustle. So, is it? Is yeah, it? Yeah, a hustle. To me, a hustle is a hustle. Right. You know what I'm saying? I took some of the negative things. The same thing I did in numbers. I landed a top job in Roosevelt Savings Bank. Right. Because of how good I was doing data entry, doing them numbers. Right. My, my, my speed was So bad. did you take so those I took numbers? negative and put it into something positive. What did you see in Gucci nobody else saw? He's actually a really cool... Like, he's a kid. It's the kid. It's, it's the little boy that I see to him. Okay. It's the consistency that he had. Like, he was consistent in coming, like, at six, at 6 in the morning at that. He wanted to do breakfast. His mannerism was good. There was so many things about him 
that was good. The biggest thing is that I was told not to deal with him. Really? By who? Because he's a street dude? Other people was like, at that time, they was beefing or whatever. And um, they was like, you know, if you deal with him. Was this a Jeezy beef? Yeah, that's when all that stuff was going on. Right. Yeah. And at that time, then they was like, if you deal with him, then we'll never deal with you again. Mm. And, of course, Tiffany, my niece, had said to me, I tell you, I ain't never known you to listen to somebody tell you don't deal with somebody. Right. You know? And that's what did it. That's and he what... was just persistent. Like, he was really persistent. He... He knew what he wanted, and you could just see the hunger in him. And that little boy was in him. And right. at that time, also, he completed my circle as far as my sons because I had lost one of my sons a few years prior to that. And he just completed that element, not only within me, but within my sons, period. And even within the family, because everybody grew to love him. Like, for a minute, people didn't even know that I really wasn't his real aunt. Right. Even to his own biological family. Oh, wow. It was so crazy. His mom's side thought I was with the father's side. The father's side thought I was with the mother's side. <laughs> and it was, like, really crazy. But, I mean, I still get along with them to this day. I still talk to everybody still. You know what I'm saying? We still communicate with each other. But his persistent. He was very persistent. When did you... Do. You were, like, one of the early people to leave New York for Atlanta. Mm. What did you know about Atlanta that we didn't know, because I ain't know shit? I had a driver's license here. <laughs> How the fuck you get a driver's Yo, license This is in? the only place I've ever had a driver's license. Are you kidding me? I promise you. I never had a license in New York. You never had New York City driver's never. license? Never. Never had. You was, never. Wh you was whipping some shit, though. Yeah, Dad. but I never had a license. But you know, in New York, half the people, they don't have no damn license. Right. They don't have no license or insurance. Up there, it's different. You just got your baseball bat in the back of the car. Right. You know, but that's that's just it. But my sister lived here. Okay. And um, after Red was killed, that was it for me. I just did not want to be in New York anymore because, one, now my children are not going to have a mother because I was, like, you know, from then, of uh, uh, that person that I was back then, it was something right. different. But I knew that it was no longer big enough for me and other people to be there. So I made a choice. And you came down to Atlanta? Mm -hmm. My and, sister was living here. Okay. So your sister was kind of like the catalyst mm -hmm. for you to say, you know what, I'm not dealing with New York no more. Mm -hmm. I'm going to Atlanta. When did your son start? When did Waka start? <laughs> Waka was no damn rapper. Um, At all, because the first time I met him, he told me I'm not a rapper. Yeah. He said, I'm doing this. Because I asked him, he had hot singles. And I said, when's the album going to drop? He said, I'm not doing no album. He, was, he didn't really have singles. Like, what, what happened is that this time Gucci had gotten locked up. Um, Juice had gotten shot. Um, Nicki was going like everything. OJ the Juice Man. Mm -hmm. Okay. Everything had just went crazy. Everything started happening, okay? And um, I was in trouble because the whole camp was caving in. Like, all, right. like, all these different things was going on. And what people didn't know... There wasn't very many of us there that was really doing this stuff, you know? And um, he just came in because so many people was writing. It's like, yo, he was like Gucci hype guy. He wasn't because, you know, Gucci do the dance like Herman Monster on stage. When he <laughs> so Walker used to get up there and do all this crazy stuff. And they thought it was a hype guy. So people started sending him beats. And it was like, yo, you should rap. You should do this. And then one day I was laying in the bed and he came running in the house. And um, that's what, oh, let's do it. But before that, he had told me about a record dress and going on from down south. I'm like, you ain't from no down south. I said, what did you bring him to Right, you're a farmer boulevard yeah. nigga. But he took me to a club. And I went to a club and seen him perform that song. And I seen how people were. And I was like, oh, my God. They going crazy over this. But the song still didn't catch me. And Walker's a big jokester. Like, right. he loves comedy. He's a big jokester. So I ain't pay him no mind with that. And um, I was in my bed, and he came in the house, and he said, Mom, I got something I want you to hear. I said, Walker, come on. And I rolled over. That nigga put down, I fuck my money up. Heard that shit. <laughs> nah, I, I can't read up. up. I jumped up. I said, holy shit, we got a record. He snatched that record out and shot out the door. He went running down the street. I can't rap. He started going through all this stuff. Like, you telling me what I can't do. And the rest was just history. Wow. And it was really just there. It wasn't that he wanted to rap. That's not what he wanted to do. He was backing up Gucci. Okay. It was holding down Gucci. While Gucci was down, he felt like he had to be the one to hold the fort down. All right. That's how all of that came about. How did Nicki come across the table? Fendi. 
Fendi. Fendi was the first person that told me about Nikki because everybody knew I wanted a girl. So everybody knows with me, I'm pro woman. Right. Okay. You can do all this stuff with guys, and um, I wanted a female. I wanted a female bad. And Fendi had booked Gucci. Okay. And when we was down there, he had said, Yo, Deb, I got the perfect female for you. I said, I'm going to get out of here. I ain't trying to hear nothing because, you know, the girls, they was just corny. Like, you just didn't hear anything. So he said, you know what? Take this and pop this in on your way going back home because we was driving back from North Carolina to come back here to Atlanta. And I listened. I listened to her. I was like, holy shit. I said, yo, what she look like, right? And I looked, you know, I looked on her IG and he had called me and told me about the IG. But I never did still get to see her. Then. Like, nothing ever transpired. We went to Be More. And um, we was coming out, and the man asked us, please, could you stay? Because Wayne was late coming in to Baltimore to do the show. And we stayed there, so now we're leaving out because we got to hurry and get to another show. Here come Nikki coming through the garage. And they said, that's Nikki. That's Nikki Minaj. I was like, tell Gucci, get your ass off. Come on, let's go. I'm going damn, let's go. We got to right. go. I didn't see her. Now fast forward, her cousin's husband, which is was one of my securities at that time, he had called. Nikki was stuck in North Carolina. And I paid for her to come up. Wow. And that's how he put me on the phone with Nikki and me and her talk. And she was like, she wanted a female. And me and her talked and she came up and I just told her, I said, listen, if you want to work with me, you got to come here to Atlanta. Right. Because I'm not coming to New York. Right. But you got to come here. And, um... She came here. But she was signed to Fendi, wasn't she? Or was that just some Fendi helping her out? Well, was it legal contract? I, I don't, I don't, I don't, no, I don't think it was anything legal. I think because you know at that time really then people was doing things on still on a handshake, mm -hmm. and it still wasn't even about that. He was doing because at that time Fendi was doing a come up DVD. Right. But the deal Back that when she them was, DVDs right, was hot, that smack. she was supposed to get with Wayne wasn't a deal. Through, it was through him. With Wayne, okay. that she was supposed to go through. But when I took her, it was stuff that was going on there that I wasn't in agreement with. Okay. Okay. And um, then me and him didn't see eye to eye because he did this one DVD cover that said "Fat Pussy," and I wasn't with that. Okay. Like that was the straw that broke the camel's back. Like we not selling sex. Like I just didn't want her to be that sex symbol, and then I didn't want that little Kim look again. Like little Kim is there. That's her. Right. You understand what I'm saying? And besides, Nikki didn't want to do it either. She didn't want that. Like, she right. just did not want that, but she was being pushed because men, that's what y'all do. Y'all push us a Why certain way. Why blame me? I ain't never push Listen, nobody no way, If the shoe no fits, way, wear it, goddammit. If the shoe fits, shit. wear it. If it don't apply, let it fly. Okay? <laughs> but men like that sexual stuff. That's what they like. And I said, we not selling sex. Right. That's what we not going to do. But that's what she ended up doing, though, Dad. What do you mean? Nikki sold a lot of sex later on in her career. The sex didn't get her through the door. No, we're not gonna talk about. Listen, her, the sex did not get her through the door. She didn't have to strip and take her clothes off and go through all that stuff. Ain't nobody gonna tell. I, I get I argue with so many people about that. They want to tell me that that's not true. That's not true. She what, worked her what? ass off. She worked her ass off. If any woman ever deserved what they got, she deserved it. She deserved it. Everything to this day, there with everybody else saying how things are going on out there. Right. The one thing that I could say, everything that girl told me she was going to do, she was going to have, who she was going to be, is that person today. Mm. She's the first woman I've ever met that stuck by everything it is that she said. Everything she said. And I will always, always respect her. Absolutely. All way, even to the marriage, to the husband, to the baby. She was not even going to have a baby out of wedlock. She was never going to do everything that girl told me. Everything I see her today, she is exactly that person. She's she stuck knew. By it. And she had tunnel vision. Nothing stopped her. She wasn't late at night in the studio smoking weed with a bunch of people. She had. She's like Mariah. You know how Mariah don't like people yeah. in the studio with her? Nikki was the same way. Right. It ain't got nothing to do with you seeing if I'm writing, if I'm doing all this stuff. She was focused on everything it is she wanted to do. And she was in the studio in the daytime. Mm. So in the daytime, she was going in there and she was doing exactly what it is that she had to do. I don't have negative to say about her. I, I, I don't. I, I, don't. I have she defended worked, her she on... Worked her first of all, she's from Queens. 
number one, Southside, number two, and I have defended her about her skill level yes. on many occasions. I don't give she a grew. fuck. She, 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 she's she literally, grown. She, she has grown, grown she's dope so, as fuck, so much. No matter what somebody say, you, you understand, incidentally, right. we're not beefing. You understand? I just never felt that I needed to get out there and say something. I understood her. I love Gucci so much that she did not want her career to be ruined. Right. She didn't want her career ruined. She said, he's going to take all of us down. We're not going to go nowhere. I wasn't going to leave him. Regardless of whatever it is, that's what people don't know. It wasn't how people ran out and said whatever. I'm going to always love her. That's my that's my industry, baby. Right. There's nothing anybody, because I don't give a damn shit. 1,500 people come to her. You not me. You didn't experience what I experienced. You didn't go through what I went through. I made it easy for you. Right. You nurtured her. I did that. Absolutely. So there's nothing that anyone could ever say to me, or nor am I going to sit here and downplay her. Every, if a person come in, as soon as a, a chick even do come people, to me. Do people actually want you to do that shit? Yeah. You got to hear, with, I would never do you like Nicki Minaj. What did Nicki Minaj do to me? You don't know the story. Right. You didn't so know this shit. how could you ever say anything about anything? You don't know the story of any of them. How could you ever really sit here and say, but see, people, social media has made it now where people could say whatever it is that they want to say, and people run with it, and they say, this is what it is, or you did this, or you did that because the person said that that's what happened. Right. You understand what I'm saying? That they go with it. I ain't never told you nothing. It's three sides. Her side, my side, and the truth. And the truth That's lies right. within all of us. You understand what I'm saying? So you can sit here and say whatever it is that you want to say. But hands down, I'll say that. She can sit here and call me every name in the book but the child of God. I'm going to still give her her props because I know what I went through with her. Right. And I know the real story of what she went through. Regardless of what everybody see or whatever people want to push away, because people tend to forget a lot of things once they get to a certain point. But I really wish that a lot of people knew half of the things that half of these artists go through for real, for real. Right. It the would struggle, help out the real so, struggle. Right. It would help out so many people. Not being heard, not being recognized. There you go. And I, I can understand how artists can be bitter because people shit on you, and then when you blow up, everybody want to be she on your shit. She can't. One thing about the two things for sure, she ain't going to never tell nobody I shit it on her. Right. Because that ain't never I happened. I never heard her say that. That, that, that can never happen. I'm going to def defend every last one of them. It, it doesn't matter. I don't care what they say about me. You're not going to sit here and get me to downplay because I enjoyed every minute of that time that I was there. Right. And you sacrificed a whole lot. I, you have no idea. My whole, everything about me has been sacrificed. Damn What's man. on the horizon for Deb Ann? Mm. Tell, so me, I the, have some things tell me the on. new shit. That's what I, I want. Have my we book. talked about yeah. the old shit. Yeah, you I got a book? I have a book about coming About time, up. motherfucker. Unmanageable me. About time. Are you bearing all the truth as you know it? I'm I'm talking about me. Okay. Okay? It's not a book that people I want you to pick up and think I'm telling people secrets and going right. through shit like that. That ain't happening. That ain't who that I am. Ain't, that's never going to be who yeah. you are. That's not who I am. So nah, I'm not, that ain't don't you. look for anything like that. Nah, you ain't snitching. You, you know, ain't never but been no snitch. I will, I will take my own ownership and whatever, but it's about me. So you understand. A lot of people don't really know who I am. They don't know me. Right. You know what I'm saying? And I don't make it a, my business. They I may know of you, but, yeah, they, but they don't, don't really know, know you. Right. Okay? I don't hang out in the in crowds. I'm not on all the red carpets. I'm not on all that stuff. And people say, oh, she don't be there because she blackballed. You can't blackball me from something I'm not a part of. <laughs> you understand? I might be in things, but I'm not a part of it. That's not right. me. You can't stop me from doing it. You've tried that plenty of times. Right. I, those things, I'm not worried about that. I'm not incomplete because I'm not hanging out with people. Right. I'm not incomplete because you don't see me on newspapers and all that I kind of stuff. I tell niggas that all the time about I me. I am who I am. My okay. friends are my friends. Stop trying to make me an industry nigga. I'm don't not that nigga. Don't do that to me. No, I don't fuck with you. Okay? That. The problem is all the people that's always in people's face and the pictures and all that, show me shit they really did. Mm. Show me shit they really did. Pretty much nothing okay. half the time. But I'm not going to do that. They know the people that they can use. They know the people that they can do. Niggas go to the opening of a fucking oyster. Won't they? They run down and buy a brand new outfit for the opening of a fucking clam. I'm not at the point, Deb's not at the point where we need to look. I don't need it. I don't need it. I want to quietly icons. do what I do. Yeah. I want to quietly icons. do what I want to do. You can hear me, but never see me. Right. 
Okay. I don't have to be well, there. Well, y'all got to see me because it's called to. Come On Son, the podcast. So but this is a different kind of seeing. Like right. When you're seeing you this it's way. It's seeing me on my terms. terms. That's it. That's what it I is. Don't, I don't have to take a thousand. Oh, where's all her pictures? What pictures I got to take? I'm representing a person. I remember one time we went to um, in New Orleans, and I was with Andy Stone. I was working with Andy Stone. And he kept, oh, dab, dab, dab. Can I take a picture? Can I take a picture with you? I can't take pictures. Like, I can't take a picture now. And Angie stopped and she looked at me. It's not my turn. Like, I'm working. And they was like, what do you mean working? I'm working with Angie right now. Right. I can't take a picture with you because I'm working with her, even though a person might not understand that. You know, but you, your own, I'm working. You understand what I'm saying? So it's a difference when you're doing stuff like that. I don't want to be in the picture. I don't even like all pictures. I don't even have 100 pictures of me when I was younger. I lived that kind of life. I don't want pictures. You don't do pictures. You know what I'm saying? I can't help it. Like, I I've been here too long now. You can't change a lot of this stuff with me. I'm not a picture freak. You have never been. Yeah. I Can we shout out your brothers? Oh, Bimmy, Bimmy and Joe. Bimmy and Joe. Yeah. Bimmy and Joe. Bimmy, what's up, my nigga? You got to come and send it And Joe. Yo, yeah. Joe, Joe New York now. Joe, you already know, me. Joe. Yeah, them my babies. You know, you used to have the whole motherfucking community <laughs> petrified, Joe. You calm down. I love you for that. You've grown up now. Shout out to Bimmy, too, man. Yeah, you've grown up now. Like, yeah, we you grown grow up. up and, we and grown you up. Grow out what is it that? about Queens? What is it about Queens? Now, my, my, my business partner, manager, Dan, from the Bronx, he likes to talk that Bronx shit. Oh, what down. is it about Queens that makes us, we are some of the most successful people in the industry. What is it about Queens? You know Queens is the money getting, you know. It was money Quiet, getting, though. Quietly. They because counted us out, why? though, didn't that, they? Yeah, because we was hostility that they would say, because we had houses and stuff like that. <laughs> grass. See, it's, yeah, so we had Cars grass in front of the and house. all that. So it was, it was different. But it's bullshit. <laughs> you listen to the peanut Shut gallery. Shut the fuck up, peanut okay. gallery. Peanut gallery over there. Hate gallery. up. Hate up. Okay. But the problem is, is that we was low key. Right. And it's the same thing with now. If you look at everything now, look at all the showboat people that stay in the most shit. The quiet people move good. Right. You understand what I'm saying? I it's like, you. you don't have to broadcast you getting money. You don't have you to do that. You ain't got to sit on Instagram with the stacks stack on stack your head. Stack a stack of money like this. And then you ain't got shit. When somebody in your family get killed, you put up a GoFundMe. They look stupid. Or the IRS is coming at you. Right. Or you sit in the courtroom and they, re they recorded all the stuff that you had already. Right. You understand what I'm saying? It's different. Queens people move differently. So... I'm not hating, but you know all the Talk stigmas. that shit, Dad. You know we the don't, stigmas that they had on all the boroughs. change this shit, yeah. All the, but the game do have Staten to be Staten Island, Staten Island, the Queens was disrespected more than anybody else. Anybody. Mm -hmm. In the five boroughs. In the five boroughs. It was boroughs. always Manhattan. The Bronx always got props. And Brooklyn. When it came to us, they used to call us the fucking desert. That's why, what, right? That's why Clue but, started but Desert Stone. Also, look at even if you go back in the days, our boss. Who did the, who did they give? Who did the Guineas give it to? Was Queens Pop? Right. Pop Freeman. Shout out to Pop. Pop Freeman. Like they talk about the Supreme Team and talk about um, Fat Cat. No. There was people before there that. There was people. Pop Freeman. Pop Freeman was that, that who nigga. They gave it to somebody fifty. We do the pop freedom nah, story. Nah, nah, nah. He ain't coming over <laughs> on the north side. No, he's not I fucking love with that. Not, not 50 the North Side. Like don't fuck with the North Side. Not the North Side. No. The North Side is a little different. Buck Pop was here, and then you still have the boss under him still alive to the day. Right. Here. All good. That ran Queens. That's who ran Queens. The real stories of that stuff. That's the real stuff. She knows it. Yeah. Dad, when your book coming out, Dad? Hopefully I'll be finished in like March. Okay. I'll um I'll be finished. Unmanageable me. It's my sister, y'all. Yeah. Give it up for Deb Anthony. Miss Deb to y'all niggas. Give it up for Deb Anthony, man. Come on, son, the podcast. I'm Ed Lover. Y'all keep God first. Everything else will fall into place. I'll talk at you to you. With you and about you next Thursday. Be good. If you can't be good, be careful. If you can't be careful. Introduce your artist to Miss Deb. <laughs> Until the next time we ride together, slide together, laugh out loud together. And love of Miss Deb saying God bless each and every one of y'all. Thank y'all so much for tuning me in and not tuning me out. I give you the good shit and never the bullshit right here on Killer Inside the podcast. I'll talk to y'all next Thursday. Peace out. <laughs>
Yams on the track. <laughs>